Hi, my name is Abhishek Maitre. After a long time, I am creating this video for you. It is regarding the service bus. How to create Azure service bus and a queue. So, starting with service bus basics, like there are the three different uh, entities of any, any service bus. One is message and sender. Another one is bus, service bus queue and the namespace, I would say. And third one is the message to receive. So what happens if we talk about uh, the official documentation of Microsoft? As per that, this diagram would be there, and you can get view of this from the official documentation. Here, message sender may be multiple different entities like web app, mobile app, and service. They will go to all the messages will go through the queue, which is also name as service bus namespace. And finally, the message would be received by the message receiver. And all the messages what are being sent from the sender will go in a queue fashion and uh, would be treated as first in first out mode. And finally, the, your uh, your service or the application which the consumer of this service would receive the message one by one. Okay, so. For more details, you can just read out uh, this thing. Since it's supposed to the brokered messaging model, it is a brokered messaging model which has sender to, to receive communication. Message start from sender would be re received by the receiver through the particular channel. So it becomes an important part of the process and manage the messages in a few manner. The important point is the mechanism is uh, there might be various messages sender and send, uh, that send the message to queue even without wait for the response from the receiver because everything works in the asynchronous manner. Now, let's get started with the practical demonstration. So, let me... Yeah, okay. So, if you are on the Microsoft Azure portal, I have already logged in. Uh, so, in this Azure portal, you have to search for the Azure bus or you maybe go by by this service bus right and you will come to this portal displayed here we are i am going to create a new service bus add on this it will ask me to create namespace first you remember uh, we were talking about uh, the namespace uh, while we are looking at the image so namespace is the mediocre which is basically maintaining the queue here you have to choose your subscription i have the free subscription trial and i can create a new um, source group i would say rg demo sb service bus okay and whatever the uh, unique name you can pass like um, uh, ns service bus if it is available no, it is not available demo fortunately this name is available in the directory so the whole fdn is uh, fully qualified domain name is ns service bus demo dot service bus dot windows dot net uh, my location would be central india because this is nearest place uh, to me pricing here okay well, one good thing is we have to look at it although we have uh, recommended premium basic Standard and premium different uh, pricing here available, but let me click on this and see the difference. Here there are the three different plans: basic, standard, and premium. So in the basic plan, you can just create a queue, but in the standard plan, you are also having a privilege to create topic and uh, in the premium as well because premium is very very costly. Uh, for this demonstration, we can go and create the queue itself. Okay, and also one thing to be note. Here, if you see, both basic and standard are working in the shared capacity, whereas uh, premium has the dedicated capacity. Now, tot it totally depends on the consumer uh, who wants to create this service and what is the usage of the service. Based on that, the decision would be made. In general, uh, enterprises uses the premium one, but again, it's your your choice. For my demonstration, I can go with the uh, probably standard and 
I chose a standard, clicked on this, it should reflect here. After select, standard has been selected. Uh, you can add the tag if you wish, otherwise, you can leave it blank and review. Validation is successful. Once I click on this, it would start uh, creating the namespace for me. Uh, it will it may take a couple of seconds, so I'll get back to you once it is done. Great, my service namespace is now ready. Uh, click on go to resource. Let me see. My uh, namespace is ready, and uh, we can see it is created under RG demo SP standard tier and the full host name is this one okay once it is done the next step is to go and uh, look at the shared access policies here by default it has created one policy for me root manage shared access key just notice one thing click on this first and you would get couple of check boxes here like message send listen primary key secondary key primary connection string and secondary connection string. this would be used in uh, coming few minutes we have to note it down either somewhere uh, like for example i can copy this primary key let me keep it somewhere here which i need to basically note it down and the primary connection string primary connection string this command would be used this very shortly so let me uh, first copy this paste this here and i'll uh, tell you about this command later okay my work is done here it the ss policy is ready let me close this one now go to the queue in little downside click on queue and click on this plus Q button and it will ask for some questions from you, some parameters from you. You have to pass a name of your queue where uh, your uh, basically the uh, the request would start sending. So I'm giving a name for this queue is my test queue. Right? It's available? Yeah, it is available. And the max queue size could be from 1 GB to 5 GB totally depends on your requirement 1 GB is enough for me for this demonstration also a message time to live how long this message would remain there in the system if it is not being attended so it would be there for 14 days uh, lock, lockdown lock duration is you can even decide your lock duration how, by default it is 30 second you can see and if you click on enable duplicate detection this is the another feature you can see which will identify the similar kind of messages are coming to the queue if it is so so it would stop that duplicate detection i don't uh, need this feature enable dead lettering is uh, basically if your uh, message is there in the queue and it is not being attended by any of the recipient or maybe uh, any receiver so it would be a kind of dead message and it would basically uh, go to the a dead lettering queue which is something uh, archival policy so enable sessions and enable partitioning i'm not going to uh, suppose to going to do do this enable partitioning is quite similar like if you have done something in cosmos tv so let me go with the default settings and create this queue once you click on create your uh, process would start of creating the queue it may take a couple of seconds A queue has been created. Let me see the status of this queue. If I go inside this queue, it will give me some good interface uh, with the OQ uh, Q URL. In fact, here if you can see uh, one one thing is good, very very nice uh, service bus explorer, which is in, uh, currently in the preview mode. But for uh, Windows users, it is very good. You can down, even download it locally. I have downloaded this where you can just manage your all the queue and your uh, queue related things here it's a good interface in fact i'm not going to de uh, going in detail of this interface, but you can very well uh, go to uh, internet and download it 
right currently active message just count schedule message everything is zero and you see your maximum size of your queue is 1 gb now another step is how to send the message and how to receive the message and how can we see uh, uh, the messages are being um, sent from here and received from there for that what you can do is uh, i what i did i went to this github repository this is by default recommended repository by microsoft i have downloaded the code from uh, here and kept locally this is the project i have downloaded from that repository and it is freely available to you you can even just use it the purpose of this complete code is to generate the messages send the messages and receive the messages uh, at the final end based on your given connection string and your queue okay so the demand would be a service bus name connection string which we have taken few minutes ago uh, service bus uh, this is this connection string complete and the queue name queue name i have created is um this thing my test queue let me copy this and paste it in the command there are the two parameters now the another step is just build this project first let me let me build this project and what this project is doing as i said it would generate the message send the message and receive the message through your given connection string and your queue name and the build started a build is ready okay fine so if you see here in the main method the connection string and the queue name both are being demanded at the run time so you need not to be defined your connection string here and the queue name here so let me now execute this uh, this project and i have to pass both the things at command level for this this is my path where my project is currently running and uh, i can see dot net because i have already built the project from there otherwise i can build it again from uh, here but that's okay i'm copying this command and testing it here command is dot net my project name dot dll hyphen connection string is the switch i have to pass my connection string which i have taken from the portal and hyphen queue name and my particular queue which is basically responsible now let me click on this it would start generating the message sending the message and retrieving the message let's see so now see press any key to continue after this message sending message zero and you see this it has initially it started uh, sending the message from zero to ten uh, zero to nine it means ten messages it is sending and because it is a simultaneous process asynchronous process so start it started receiving the messages in between see this all these and uh, when you go to your portal and refresh this probably you won't find any difference here although your processing have been done the process is completed uh, i'm refreshing and you'll see no difference there it will remain as is it is so quick your message is being generated sent and received and your queue is again empty so we'll look at it how can we see uh, we have to interrupt this entire process see the difference which we'll do shortly here you see no difference at all so my my purpose purpose is i would interrupt the uh, process in between so for this what i'm going to do is um, anywhere where i am this is the processing the message where the messages are getting processed so i would write console dot i'm stopping the process uh, probably i can write uh, some message before stopping it console dot uh, write line say uh, process stopped for purpose for some purpose or maybe purposely whatever i am saving this project again saved and i can uh, just build the command by uh, hitting the control shift and b 
it is building the project once it is built successfully now ideally what would happen when it will start sending the message but at the moment when would uh, the process be start receiving or processing that moment it would uh, send one message and stop let's see how does it happen So the project is built and now I'm executing the similar same command again. So this time it would start sending the message from one to 10. Right. Sending the message. And you see process is stopped for some purpose. My particular command uh, is executed. I mean, it has reached to this place and it intentionally stopped. And now if I go to my portal and refresh this queue, here we can see some difference. This is this activity has been done intentionally to see the difference how the messages are going to be handled by this. Can you see the difference? Now the active message count is 10. And the current usage of my memory is 1.9 KB. It means all the messages are there. But uh, this is very, very unfortunate. Uh, the process when you would restart would be interrupted. Let me start it. Purpose stopped for, process stopped for some purpose. When I click on this, it, is, it would give me an error. Error is because it was an asynchronous uh, process and I intentionally stopped it. The asynchronous uh, process gets defeated. That is why the error is coming. But don't worry. My messages have been processed and if you go back to the, the portal and refresh it, you will see out of the 10 messages, some messages have been processed until this error has been generated. So let's see how many messages are processed and left. So you see only one message has been processed. Nine messages are still there on the queue. So how would they be processed? For this, I have to go to my code again and have to remove this line. Uh, I just commented, saved it again and uh, have to stop this now. Okay. And uh, rebuild it. Control Shift V. Rebuild successful. And let me rerun this command. This time you'll see some some different thing. The messages ideally it should be ten messages it is sending, but how many process how many messages received? It's more than ten. It means ten plus the remaining nine. It means nineteen messages have been uh, processed this time. Let me go back to the portal and just refresh it. Once you refresh, you'll see no messages would be should be there on in the pipeline. Everything would be delivered. See this. Now active messages count as zero. Your queue is again empty. It means all the messages which are newly uh, created or newly sent or the pending all the pending messages are now delivered successfully. So that is what my purpose to show you how to use the uh, Azure service bus queue effectively and uh, how can you see when some there is some interruption between the processing and uh, how can you mitigate that problem so thank you very much for watching this video expecting a similar kind of video to azure cli soon thank you very much